Well, welcome to this uh, Q&A session that we're running this evening um, about our INS programs, both the undergraduate and the postgraduate ones. And um, hopefully this video will be of use to people who are uh, looking for something interesting uh, to study. So what uh, Andrew and I are going to do, we're just going to chat amongst ourselves and discuss various um, factors and uh, about the courses, things that we think through our experience that um, people have asked, you know, questions that students have wanted answered, um, just to uh, give you a flavour of what we do and um, just to show you that it's not difficult uh, to join us or to, um, you know, study one of, your, one of our programmes. So, uh, as you can see, we've got a, a PowerPoint on here, so uh, I'll talk through that a little bit. And um, I'm going to ask Andrew a little bit as well about his uh, research interests uh, shortly, because research is one of the things that we do at the Institute for Northern Studies alongside our teaching. And our teaching reflects the research that we undertake. So if you do come and study with us, uh, you'll be studying with leading researchers in their fields, and it will help you think and focus on the, the research that you might want to do in your dissertations as well. So without further ado, I've still never been able to come up with a better saying than that. Not everybody says that, so I'm saying it as well. So uh, Andrew, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. And what's the weather down south there in Orkney? Well, yes, I'm normally based in, in Kirkwall in Orkney, but um, I'm actually this week down, down south south uh, in the central belt. But oh, uh, far away. yes, I am. But normally I'm based in the uh, Scots House in, in Kirkwall in Orkney. And we can see a picture of Scots House there, this um, cubist uh, building, which is um, where the Institute for Northern Studies is uh, physically uh, based, or at least one of the, the physical bases, because we actually spread our tentacles uh, across Scotland. Uh, I'm based in Shetland, that's Shetland UHI, and other members of staff, Professor Alex Sandmark um, and Oshin, um, are in Perth College. So we're uh, sort of spread across the, the north. Um, okay, well, as you can see then, we have a, an image of Scots House and a, an image from Iceland as well, which um, reflects the, our interests. So we were going to be joined a, by uh, Lynn Campbell, but unfortunately, Lynn, uh, Lynn is uh, suffering from COVID. It hasn't gone. It's still lurking uh, around, so we wish her a, a well, and we'll try and fill the gap that she's left by explaining the undergraduate courses uh, as well that she runs. Okay. So, um, one of the things I'm sure you would like to know when considering what course to undertake is who are the people that uh, you might meet? Who are the people who will teach you and who will guide your learning? And here we have uh, the faces of our staff. And there's Andrew there, um, a lecturer, who's one of our newest members of staff. And I'm sort of uh, in the second row there. I'm one of the oldest members of staff. Uh, but we can see that um, the, we have quite a large uh, pool of, of lecturers, all with very uh, interesting uh, research uh, activities. So Professor Donald Hiddle, who is the uh, director of the Institute for Northern Studies, um, is an expert in Viking studies and Highlands and Islands literature and island studies and a, a range of other things. Uh, Professor Stefan Brink is a is a very highly re um, renowned and famous um, Swedish archaeologist and onomastician. That's a place name expert. Uh, Professor Alexandra Sandmark is a, um, a highly regarded archaeologist who's been um, researching all sorts of uh, very interesting aspects of Viking heritage um, in Scotland. Uh, and next is myself. My particular interests are um, island studies and Viking studies, but I also teach on Highlands and Islands literature eh, as well. And in fact, anything linguistic, whether it's in the Old Norse or Gaelic, is of great interest eh, to me. Then Lynn, who I mentioned just a little bit, mo uh, a few moments ago, um, she's the program leader for 
uh, the BA Culture and Heritage, and she's undertaking a PhD herself. And she has gone through um, uh, her uh, student career with AINS and is now um, a vital uh, resource uh, for us. Then we have uh, Dr. Ushin Plum, um, who is a Celticist. We've got lots of strange terms uh, here today. A Celticist with a particular interest in the, um, the Pictish period in, in Scotland. And then we have himself, uh, Andrew, he can tell you what he is particularly interested in researching. Yeah, so I'm a little bit of a black sheep in the, the INS department because um, I look at the early modern period. So I'm a historian of primarily Scotland in the 17th century, uh, but I also have interests in, in Northern European history, whether they be religious, political or military. And uh, in particular, my research looks at uh, British civil wars, but I teach on a range of different topics, uh, including um, topics on things like identity formation, popular culture, a little bit of literature as well, and of course, the history of Scotland and Northern Europe. Thank you very much, Andrew. And um, then we also have uh, Prof Professor Myred Nikra and Professor Ulrich Kokko, who um, are experts in um, ethnology and folklore, and they contribute to a number of the uh, the programmes and they've taught on my island studies uh, modules, uh, amongst other things. So you can see we, we cover a, a whole wide range of different uh, areas of research. And if one of those particular areas of interest, uh, research is of interest to, to you, then please uh, you know get in touch. Right, so that's the staff. Then, oh, who's that? Well, we have myself. Um, this is a little uh, video that I made for the um, INS marketing campaign that we had uh, last year, where I talk very uh, briefly about the different masters. And I thought it would, might be uh, worthwhile just playing this video. You might think that's a bit of a cop out. Well, uh, no, not really, because in our teaching, we use video conferencing and we we play uh, clips of uh, material as well and if we've if i've pressed the right button if i play this it should um come up uh, on the screen and you should be able to hear what i'm saying if it doesn't work well i'll just put that down to a technical glitch like the way my name is spelt uh, on this abdru i've never heard of an abdru before but that's what the uhi uh, mistakenly uh, called me uh, on this and um I'm sort of swithering about adopting that uh, as a name because certainly there can't be many Abru Jenningses uh, about. Okay, let's see if this will play. First of all, we have to find it. You can tell me, Andrew, if you can hear it once we get started. Sure. That's not coming through, Andrew. It's not coming through. Okay, I'll put it onto the screen. Hang on a sec. It's shrunk. Hang on. I was Irish literature and Irish studies. Quite a variety of material. Still not working. So I can see your, your tab now. Okay. Mighty studies, exciting program, explores mighty history. So I can hear it. It's just quite quiet. Okay. Well, that shows that the the technology is working. This area, their home. Island Studies is an innovative program, the only one in the UK which explores the nature of islanders, looking at island cultures, politics, and island futures. And there we go, that's enough of that. That's confusing, is it not, watching me uh, talking on a video? But it shows how it works. Okay. Um, where are we? No, there we are. Mm -hmm. So, um, that does work, which is good, because occasionally we've had um, sort of uh, people wondering, can you show films? Can you show uh, clips um, during uh, v, uh, VC seminars? Yes, 
uh, we can. Okay, so um, you can also look at this very short video on YouTube because we have an INS YouTube channel. And um, both Andrew and I organize uh, seminar uh, series that run through the, the year. And um, these are recorded and are available uh, to the public uh, to watch. And you might want to sort of, you might want to watch them or attend the VC seminars uh, live, as it were. But if you watch these seminars, you'll get another flavor for the, uh, the things that we research and the areas that we're interested in. So um, I don't know, Andrew, if you'd like to just uh, mention a couple of highlights, perhaps, of, of the, the last seminar series. Yeah, sure. I mean, the seminar series is open to everyone, so um, we get a diverse audience and to reflect that we get a diverse range of papers. And as you might be getting the sense, we cover a lot of areas within INS. So some of the papers we've had this year have included topics such as uh, the Viking revitalization in the 19th and 20th century in Sweden. We've also had uh, papers on the Tudor and Stuart policies towards the Highlands and Islands in the 16th and 17th century. And most recently, we had a, a paper by our very own Mairead, who was talking about how to define and protect heritage in a, a variety of different national contexts. So there's a huge amount of topics there on offer. And of course, that's just one half of the seminar offerings that we have, because that is through the uh, Institute for Northern Studies seminar series. And uh, Andrew runs a parallel uh, series of seminars to focus specifically on island studies. Yeah, thank you. Yes, um, my series is called um, Islands Matter. And uh, I try to get researchers um, and scholars who are based in the islands or who are studying the islands or island cultures in one way or another. And the most recent seminar that we had it was from Mark Chivers, who is um, a PhD graduate uh, with us, who um, did a fantastic study of the traditional Shetland boat. And he has um, produced a, a very attractive book on that subject as well, which is now available at all good booksellers. Um, uh, so his seminar is well worth watching. It's a fascinating exploration of Shetland's cultural heritage. Okay, so you can see from the, the image there still on the screen, these are the master's programs that we, we run. So there's the Emlet in Viking Studies, which is undoubtedly our most popular. Um, Vikings are ubiquitous uh, these days. And there's another uh, amazing Viking film out at the moment. This helps to date when this video is being made, if you're watching it, uh, you know, in 2000 years time, uh, we're making it at the time that uh, the Northman is on in the cinemas. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen it yet, Andrew. I haven't, not yet, but uh, it will be on the watch list over the, the summer holidays and potentially part of the teaching materials for next semester. Yeah, I think it, I think it should be. I'm going to watch it tomorrow night. So perfect. Um, I'll feed back uh, what it's like. <laughs> Um, but what Andrew mentioned there is uh, very relevant. Uh, one of the modules in the Viking studies is visualizing the Vikings, which looks at the Vikings in um, popular uh, culture and other things, also the development of the, the Viking myth and um, the sort of studying the popularity of the Viking uh, image over the last couple of hundred years, but certainly also focuses on Vikings in popular culture, so even Vikings on TV or... Vikings at Uphelia in Shetland or in this uh, new movie. Um, so Viking studies is very popular and there are people studying it from all over the world. So from Australia to, to Unst people that have, uh, we have uh, students who are doing that a particular degree and they attend by VC because um, we hold two hour seminars um, per module per week. Um, so that's like 12 uh, two-hour seminars for most modules. Um, and the material, you know, teaching material is available online and you get a, an interesting seminar or lecture online which you can engage with. Uh, they're also recorded as well. So if you're in work and uh, you can't attend an actual VC 
um, you will be able to watch the recording as well. But this means that people um, don't have to come to the Orkney or Shetland or Perth uh, to study um, any of our programmes. It can be done from home. And what sets it apart from, say, the Open University is these live uh, video conference uh, sessions. And I don't think, uh, well, there, there are hardly any online or um, VC-based um, Viking studies uh, degrees out there. So we have a sort of cornered uh, the market on that. Um, we also have the Emlet in Highlands and Islands Literature, which is a stalwart of our, um, our degree program. And it does exactly what it says in the tin. It looks at the literature of the Scottish Highlands and the, the islands from a, a range of uh, different perspectives. Um, one of those is um, yeah, looks at um, I forgot the name of it, Andrew. Place. There we go. I used to writers teach it. Now you teach. Yeah. Now you teach it. Tell us a little bit about writers and place. Yeah. So writers and place is uh, just quite a unique course. Um, the the idea behind it is to try and trace the connection between uh, literature and the authors and the places and importantly the context from which they were produced. So each week in Writers in Place we take a new author uh, and these include some of the big names, Island Literature, the likes of Neil Gunn, uh, but also other smaller more regional authors and we look at the, the importance of their environment and their individual context and how that shines through in their literature. So we, there's a range of different um, topics and, and contexts and themes that we discuss across the course, but it includes things like the kind of the remoteness of some of the places where these uh, or perceived remoteness, at least uh, on some of these places, but also, you know, big world events like the impact which World War Two had on uh, several communities in uh, the Highlands and Islands, for example. So a really, really quite unique course uh, and one which always gets a lot of uh, positive reviews from students. It certainly does. Um... And one of the other modules that I teach on that particular program um, is Tour of the Highlands, which looks at travel writing over the last nearly 300 years and um, looks at how travellers have, what they've said about the Highlands and how they've charted uh, changes in the economy and the culture of the Highlands. And also how the the image of the Highlander has, has changed from being a sort of um, a barbarian to a romantic hero and you can see that in people's yeah, accounts. Um, the next one is the Emlet Island Studies, which is again uh, very unusual. Uh, Island Studies looks at the history, culture, economy, the future of islands. And although we we focus in on the Scottish islands like Shetland, Orkney and the Hebrides. It also has a, a wider worldwide perspective as well. So in the module that looks at islandness, what makes an island, what sets an, an island apart from a, a mainland, um, we look at islands uh, right across the globe from Pacific, Caribbean, the North Atlantic um, and reflect on how uh, some of the ideas about islands are common to islands around the world. and. Uh, are equally applicable to Scottish islands eh, as well. Um, one of the modules also looks at governance in islands. There's a whole lot of literature about the, um, the desire for islands to have some form of autonomy and um, run their own affairs and yet perhaps still have some connection to a mainland uh, country or nation eh, as well. Um, so that's always an interesting one. We get speakers uh, from politicians to um, other island scholars and other universities talking uh, to us. Um, so island studies, there aren't many uh, places in the world where you can study it, uh, but you can study it with us. Um, then the Emlet and Orkney and Shetland studies is a unique offering as well. Uh, this um, degree looks at the history and culture of Orkney and Shetland and puts it into context. So it looks at the history of Orkney and Shetland within the context of Scottish and Norwegian and European history, looks at the, the cultures of Orkney and Shetland, looks at the, the Scottish influence and the Norse influence, what goes to make um, Orcadian and Shetland identity uh, today. And again, 
you cannot study it anywhere else. You can only study it uh, with us. Our newest degree is the Emlet Scottish Heritage, which is an online degree. That's to say uh, the video conference component is not compulsory. Well, it's not compulsory in the other ones either, but you can do it without attending any uh, video conference. All the material is available online. And there are little videos of you know, myself and Andrew doing things, talking about uh, various aspects of the modules uh, that we teach. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to uh, teach some of your history, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, so I think that's one of the big selling points of Scot uh, the Scottish Heritage Programme is that if you are perhaps interested in various different aspects of Scotland and Scotland's past, but you don't necessarily want to force yourself down just the history route or just the archaeology route, um, the, the Scottish Heritage Programme allows you to cater your interests um, within the module offerings that we have. So if any of the modules that we've mentioned tonight or will mention tonight pique your interest, but you perhaps don't want to just do Viking studies or, or just want to do Orkney and uh, Shetland studies, um, there's a lot of flexibility in the Scottish Heritage Programme to take modules from the other programmes, um, as well as focus on um, programmes dedicated for that, um, that uh, course. So things like um, there are modules such as Scotland Story 1 and Scotland Story 2, which are kind of the kind of pure history aspects of the programme where we look at the journey which the nation we now know as Scotland took from um, earliest man all the way up to the 2014 independence referendum and the direct aftermath of that. And there's also other modules on the programme looking at things like culture, uh, heritage, music, archaeology, all these uh, sorts of aspects. So um, there's a lot of a lot of diverse students take that program uh, from people who just have a general interest in Scotland to a lot of students who want to go into things like the tourism heritage industry. Thank you. Yes, and, and uh, the module that I lead is uh, Scottish customs. So it looks at the traditional custom and belief um, in Scotland and how uh, I was going to say how it changed over time. Well, actually, it's, it's looking at how, how people have held on to uh, ideas and beliefs uh, despite uh, the Reformation and the um, you know, the Enlightenment, it's amazing how many um, sort of what you might call old ideas have been retained in um, the traditional societies in Scotland. So that's a kind of a, a mapping out of the um, the degrees that we do. And um, I think I'll, I'll bring it back to, to research again. Um, the Institute for Northern Studies has done exceptionally well in a recent, um, um, the recent REF, uh, which um, was undertaken in 2021. And uh, in uh, area studies, which is one of the submission areas within uh, REF, uh, we came out as first in Scotland and first equal in the UK. So there we go. So if you want to come and study with us, then um, you're in exalted uh, company. Um, right, okay. Just an example of the sort of uh, research program that we're involved in at the moment. This is um, a current one, the Norse and the Sea, which is looking at, well, it's not looking at, it's looking for examples of uh, Viking Age harbours, um, trading po posts, um, and aspects of, of maritime heritage that might still exist uh, in the Hebrides and along the west coast of Scotland. Things that haven't been found yet, but uh, may be lurking just under the surface. So um, I'm heading off to Egg uh, next month, a couple of weeks time, to look at a particular site, um, the Bay of, of Lake, which could well be an important um, Norse or Viking period um, loading and unloading uh, place. Okay, so that's the sort of thing we do. Okay, just close that for a second. I'll just stop the sharing. Okay. Now, um, I want to share something else with you. Another PowerPoint. Okay, but this is a fun one. 
not that the other one wasn't particularly fun either, but this is a, this is a, a humorous one. Okay, this is uh, this was prepared for us by uh, Lynn Campbell, and it poses a number of questions um, that uh, can be answered if you sign up for the BA Honours Culture and Heritage. Okay, so. There's a, a wide range of modules in the undergraduate uh, degree, which I'll show you a list of uh, shortly. But these are the sort of questions that are posed, which um, once they're answered, help you to reflect on what Scottish culture and heritage is actually like, and to separate the truth in inverted commas from the myth. So, um, so this is one of them. What role did whiskey play in the story of the Highlands? Okay, well, that's one of our our, um, our national drink, one of our um, legendary products. Well, you'll get a, um, a deeper understanding of the importance of whiskey by studying the BA. I'm not going to, going to give you the answers. I'm just posing the questions. The answers uh, will come when you sign up, okay? There we are. Why are most Highland or Highland coos brown rather than black? Hmm. Well, it's a it's a fashion statement, but you'll find out more about that. Okay. Who lived in a house like this? Well, someone with too much brass. Okay. So, and this is tied into the story of the, um, the agricultural. Um, revolution in the Highlands and all the ramifications that led uh, from that. Okay. You might like your Highlands empty, but um, that's because you've been brought up that way. In fact, there used to be a much higher population or at least a, um, a much more equitable population spread eh, across Scotland, but that has, uh, the demographic changes have been immense, um, much greater than in, uh, well, in many, uh, most other countries, in fact. Uh, why is that the case? Okay, so Lynn um, is expecting you to um, sign up so that you can find out the answer to these uh, questions. And there we go. There's more to Scotland's music than bagpipes, thank goodness. Not that I don't like bagpipes, I, you know, I like Pibroch as much as anyone else, but there is more to it uh, than that. You can also find out um, more details about these particular questions in the Emlet Scottish Heritage as well, because we address uh, these um, perhaps at a slightly different, uh, a different level, a different perspective, but, um, you know, these, you can look at those there as well. Who is more? Why are sheep so important to our history? Well, living in Shetland, they're all over the place. That wasn't always the case. Is witchcraft real? Well, I wouldn't like to speculate on that. Depends who you ask, I think. Absolutely. And what makes us who we are? Well, Lynn, it's very, uh, very good that she's produced this because, as I say, these are questions that we address in the, uh, the various masters as well, particularly this one. Um, what makes an Orcadian or a, or a Shetlander? Uh, what role has the Viking period had in the, um, the ethnic mix that has become uh, modern Scotland? And um, yeah, so that's a, a very important uh, fundamental uh, question. Okay, so thank you to Lynn uh, for that. And if you want to know more about the modules that will help you to uh, address these questions, then um, I'm going to point you now to the INS um, web pages on the UHI site, which provide lots of information uh, for you. So if we go to the Culture and Heritage BA, you'll see that it's uh, Scottish Honours um, degree over four years. And these are the core modules that you'll study in that uh, degree. Um, Andrew, do you have a sort of words of wisdom about this? 
Yeah, just that there's a lot of pathways. If anyone is interested in perhaps this being the first step towards something else, potentially a master's or um, a, a, a different kind of career or anything like that, the, um, the undergraduate module has a lot of pathways available to you. And much the same way that the Scottish Heritage uh, Master's programme, it's very flexible and it allows you to cater uh, to your own interests. The, the modules that you see up here, they, these are core, these are the compulsory ones, um, and there's a lot of flexibility within the programme to take other module options uh, from different uh, programmes. So again, if you don't want to just do a history degree or you don't just want to do an archaeology degree, this is perhaps an option that you might want to consider, which allows you to um, diversify uh, the kinds of modules that you're engaging with and potentially lead on to something that you might have in mind further down the road. Thank you very much. And there we have Alison has joined us. Ah. Um, so on the website, uh, it's very useful, not just for listing the, the actual modules. There is information about the study mode, how you actually undertake the, the study. Um, so if you just have a quick look at that, there we go. Um, you can study it in different ways. You can do it full time or part time structured or part time unstructured, depending on your own um, position, you know, or whether you've got the time uh, to do that. And it gives you information about the amount of time that you're expected to spend on the uh, on the on your studies. So there we go. Um, full time, four years, 40 hours per week. And you can study it in a range of different um, uh, UH psychologies, and you can also study it from home as well. And if we just return to uh, the content, it, the, one of the modules that I teach on this particular degree is Golden Mead and Burning Hearts, which looks at the medieval literature of the Highlands and Islands um, from the early mid early mod uh, sorry early medieval period until around 1700 or thereabouts, which is quite late for the Middle Ages, but um, the same poetic traditions were uh, being practiced in um, Gaeltacht up until that time. And uh, what about yourself, Andrew? So in the undergraduate, I don't teach a huge amount in the undergraduate um, just now, although there is um, potential for this uh, as, uh, as we go into next year and the year beyond. Um, but I, a big role that I play in the undergraduate course is as a supervisor for the interdisciplinary project. And this is another thing that's quite unique to the, um, the Heritage Programme in that most undergraduate courses, you will do your kind of big piece of work, which will be your dissertation normally in your fourth year. But in the Heritage Programme, you actually do a smaller but still substantial piece um, called the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary project, sorry, in your third year. And this is really useful because one, it allows you to put into practice a lot of the skills and um, information and topics that you've been learning about up until that point, but it also allows you almost a dry run um, at the dissertation itself. So I play quite a big role in terms of um, supervising that. And it's um, Dr. Oshin Plum that is the um, over kind of the man in charge of, of all of that, of the projects. Um, and there's, again, a huge variety of options available to students undertaking those projects. And for instance, um, this year we've had projects looking at the, the history of food in, in Scotland. We've had uh, a project looking at the role of um, women within Scottish period pieces and why it is that um, these stories about Scotland are still dominated by men, despite the fact that the, the, the scholarship on uh, a lot of Scotland's history has moved past those and, and uh, women are obviously incredibly important in key periods of, of Scotland's history. So there's, a hu again, a huge variety of topics um, that are available to students. And uh, again, the interdisciplinary project is quite a unique part of the programme. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, part of the, the master's uh, programmes is a dissertation, which is, um, you know, a very large uh, part of the degree. It's worth 60 credits. And um, you spend uh, quite a lot of time with your supervisor um, honing your uh, dissertation question and um, doing the research uh, for um, a piece of work which is um, substantial and um, some of the dissertations that we've had uh, produced are definitely uh, publishable 
you know, they're of uh, sufficient quality to be published in a, in a journal or to stand alone as a, as a small a small book. Um, I was just sort of trying to make a list of some of the dissertation topics that I've supervised uh, over the past uh, few years. And um, yeah, well, there was, oh, you know, I'll just stop sharing. I think I've got the list on my uh, screen. So where are we? Let's put um, yeah, so um, I've supervised uh, a dissertation on animal islands. You, know, you may wonder what on earth is an animal island. Well, it's a concept that was developed in Japan. Um, there's an island in Japan which is sort of overrun with cats. That they're sort of wild cats and people go to that island to be surrounded by cats and pet the cats. There's another place that has uh, wild deer that come into the, uh, the community. So this particular uh, student wondered whether the animal island concept could be applied to Scottish islands as well. Very sound piece of research he did actually and uh, his finding was yes it could uh, under the right uh, circumstances. Um, island whiskies, well, of course, that's a great uh, uh, popular uh, subject, but uh, I supervised a very interesting uh, research piece of research which was looking at uh, whiskies produced in the Scottish islands and in the Irish islands. Then um, supernatural, supernatural highlands seems to inspire a number of people, so I've done several um, uh, dissertation supervisions uh, on the traditional beliefs of the, the highlands and islands, so fairy lore, if you like. Then uh, recently, we had a very uh, excellent re piece of research done on Faroese ballads, these medieval ballads, which are st still chanted and danced in the Faroes uh, today. And the student who did that dissertation has uh, subsequently gone on to um, start a PhD on that subject. So there are pathways to go from the BA to the masters and then on to a phd uh, level as well um, of course viking studies produces a lot of of dissertations and um i uh, supervised one on um queer vikings another one on edic poetry and um a, a more sort of hist historically based one which looked at the history of the kingdoms of man and the isles so you can see it's a huge range of different topics and we have within our staff um, sufficient expertise to supervise a, a huge range of different topics um, so never fear there will be someone who can uh, supervise a topic that particularly uh, interests you okay go back to Let's have a look. Right. And I see, well, actually, um, we have some good questions here from, from Alison, who's interested in the Emlet in the Highlands and Islands literature. Um, it will be uh, available uh, this coming year. Um, there are a range of, of different modules, which uh, we mentioned a, a couple of them um, already. So uh, Writers in Place, Tour of the Highlands, um, a look at Gothic literature of the, the Highlands, um, exploring creative writing so that people can um, uh, you know, create their own Highland and Island uh, literature. Um, each module is, uh, again, um sort of uh, 20 hours supposed to be 20 hours uh, per week um and uh the there's a two hour um bc seminar for each each module and um it if if someone has done the the ba um culture degree then it fits very nicely as a uh, an entry as it were into uh, the masters and um we do um aspects of medieval literature and viking literature as well but um perhaps the focus is not quite uh, so much on that it's more 
on um, more recent uh, literature, but um, it's not exclusively uh, so, but it's exploring how place is expressed by writers and also how um, Highland and Island identities are expressed uh, by different writers. Okay. Um, right. Are we still sharing this? Uh, so as we say, if you go to the uh, the INS webpage, you can find uh, many answers to uh, questions, I, I hope. Um, that, for example, people like to know what sort of career might a degree uh, lead to. And the, of course, um, there are just having a degree is a is, is a good a good thing. It shows uh, critical uh, the ability to think critically and to to write in a cogent manner and to do research and to have good timing time skills. So they they are transferable skills. But um, more specific uh, sort of uh, careers that people have gone into from the BA um, include teaching. Uh, working with uh, various government bodies like Environment Scotland, National Trust, Nature Scotland, um, and working on, the, say, the interpretive side um, of that. Um, the heritage and tourism sectors have um, uh, need experts in heritage and Scottish culture, so there's a, um, a good market uh, there for someone with the degree and other things that you might expect as well, um, local museums, uh, archives and libraries as well and then there's other things underneath in that list which you can uh, make out so also it can be um, a stepping stone to do further uh, research okay and if you want to apply you just click on that button there you go you can get started in doing that um pretty much the same sort of information for the postgraduate degrees as well So there we go. Gives you more information on each of the, the programs. So we'll off with the Island Studies one. Gives you information on the different modules that are components of the program. Okay, and then proud of place at the bottom, the research dissertation. Now, um, the after someone has applied, the information goes to Orkney College because that's where um, students are sort of enrolled, although you're not actually, you don't have to be physically there, but um, well, it's with the masters. With the other, uh, with the undergraduate degree, you, you'd be enrolled in, in different uh, colleges across uh, UHI, but uh, don't worry about that. Um, for the master's degrees, uh, there's a, a short uh, interview um pro part of the process as well so um but that's always very uh easy going and it's just usually a matter of um the interviewer i.e myself for the masters uh, getting to know the interests of the uh, the candidate uh, the applicant and um the, you know it's uh, usually a very pleasant <laughs> experience nothing to get worried about okay so um Let's see what else is Alison, Alison asked. Yeah, uh, just a couple of questions from uh, Alison there, Andrew. So the the first is that she's asked about the dissertation for the the MLIT. Um, how long is the dissertation, and how do you choose your subject? So the the dissertation word length is fifteen thousand words, uh, which is pretty standard for humanities uh, dissertations. Uh, in terms of choosing your subject, um, the key thing is that you choose something that's that interests you because you're going to be spending a lot of time reading and writing about it. And in order to help you come to you know, the specific decisions about your project, um, that is when you will be assigned a dissertation supervisor. And the dissertation supervisor will be in some way connected to your topic, uh, likely uh, an active researcher in that area. So, for example, um, Alison, you've expressed an interest in uh, the, the Highlands Literature Programme. If you really wanted to um, write about some sort of uh, early or sorry, some sort of late medieval um, 
Scottish literature aspect or Neil Gunn, um, we would look at our supervise our members of staff and assign you a supervisor based on that. So, for example, if it was late medieval literature that you were really interested in, perhaps uh, Professor Hedel would be the best person to, to supervise you or Andrew might be the best person to supervise you. So um, how you would normally get started in that is you decide on a, a kind of area that you're very interested in, have a look at the expertise that's on offer in terms of the members of staff, feel free to drop members of staff an email and you can do this before you actually enrol in the program if, if you've got an idea in mind that you want to start kind of refining. Um, and we'll have a discussion with you and we'll, we'll help you craft a dissertation topic that is feasible uh, and that's obviously the key thing. Um, you will also be helped along the way in terms of the dissertation through a core module which looks at dissertation skills. And this runs in addition to another core module on the uh, Viking Studies, uh, Highlands and Islands Literature and uh, Scottish Heritage programmes, uh, which look at research skills and practices. There's a kind of another um, series of uh, workshops which are uh, run by Professor Sandmark, which looks specifically at the skills and resources that you'll need for the dissertation. So there's plenty of uh, help and resources available to everyone before they, they kind of embark on the dissertation, because we're very much aware that people are coming from different backgrounds. Uh, some people will never have engaged with something as, as big as a dissertation before. So there's lots of help and support throughout the whole process. Um, there was also a question, um, we've, we've addressed the how many hours a week. Um, and just to, um, so Andrew was saying there about 20 hours per module is the rough kind of guide. And that includes a lot of personal research time because um, in terms of contact time, you'll probably be about two hours a week per module. Um, but a lot of the work that you'll be doing on a weekly basis is self-directed research. So you'll get, again, you'll get lots of help and support and resources via the, the, the modules and through our online learning portal, Brightspace. Um, but really, especially at master's level, um, you need to be the one that's pu pushing your own education uh, and you need to be going away doing the directed readings, uh, etc. So that's where the, the, the rest of that time is, is filled out. Um, I'm just quickly looking through. Uh, Alison asked, uh, do I wait until next year to apply for September 2023? Andrew, you're probably the best person to, to comment on that. Um, well, uh, you can apply um, now if you'd like. Um, it, it goes to um, Orkney who, who passed it on to me and they would just note down that you didn't want to start uh, until then. Um, so don't let it hold you back. Um, I suppose it's more normal for people to apply now for uh, uh, September 2022, uh, but nonetheless, if you want to get uh, on the books, uh, as it were, um, then then why not? And um, yeah, so I think we've we've covered a, a fair deal of, of of stuff there, Andrew. Is there anything to, that that you think we've uh, we've missed out that the students might be desperate to know the answer to? I would maybe just kind of reiterate um, that there are a range of different resources um, and support methods for students coming into uh, both the undergraduate and uh, particularly the postgraduate module, because we have such a diverse range of students coming from all sorts of backgrounds. We have people who have never um, or haven't done a, a degree in you know, 20 years. We've got uh, people coming straight from undergraduate degrees. We've got professionals who are in a particular industry and perhaps are doing a, uh, a programme for their own professional development. So there's a huge range of people doing de degrees for different reasons and we cater to all of that. So don't be worried if you really want to do the programme, but you're afraid that oh, it's been 10 years since you've you've written an essay uh, because there's there's lots of support and help made available via the programme, which will help you get back into the way of doing this uh, and to develop core skills, which you'll be using across the modules and uh, especially in the big things like the dissertation. Very good point. And just sort of following on from that, uh, the materials for the degree are available online. So um, uh, some people wonder, well, if I'm doing a degree and I'm coming in by VC and I'm in Ulaanbaatar, how do I get hold of the materials? Um, well, mo virtually all, I'm gonna say 100%, but it can never be 100%, but all the, the essential core materials are available um, on a system called the VLE, Brightspace, the virtual learning environment. So uh, the materials are there. We have gone to a, a lot of effort to make sure that it's 
um, e-materials that that we use, so journals and books that are available in electronic uh, form, um, and the we provide uh, information um, suitable for uh, the programs, uh, so you can you can do it and not have access to uh, a physical library. Um, however, um, if you're based in Scotland, you can get access to other library books as well. And um, also, well, if you're within the whole of the UK, you can actually get access to university uh, libraries. So if you need extra uh, reading, but um, never fear, if you are based outside of Scotland or outside the UK, you will be able to complete your master's um, from wherever you're based because the material is all available online. And I think that's probably a good place to to wrap it up. So um, have a think, folks, and um, I hope that we'll be welcoming you to uh, the Institute for Northern Studies in future. The programs, I can assure you, are interesting and uh, you'll enjoy studying with us. So thank you very much. Thank you.